This, shown in orange, is the bacterium. But you see there's an extra boundary. There's not just the bacterial membrane, but there's another membrane. That's referred to as the symbiosome membrane. It's derived from the plant plasma membrane that was used to engulf the bacterium when it first entered the host cell. But at this point, it's become a distinctive compartment with its own protein trafficking signals. I'll just tell you a little bit about the basics of transport. Of course, this is the real action. We have nitrogen converted enzymatically into ammonium. This uses ATP and highly reduced electrons. And that ammonium is in turn transported out to the plant. As I've mentioned before, the bacterium gets energy from the plant. Malate and other dicarboxylic acids are transported into the bacterium. From there, they enter into the bacteria's own metabolism. So plant photosynthate, providing energy, bacterial nitrogen fixation, providing ammonium, that had been suspected for a long time. But emerging data from a number of labs shows that there's more going on. In fact, genetic data show that a shuttle involving amino acids that are transported in and out is also critical to sustain nitrogen fixation. How this occurs is the subject of a great deal of ongoing research. We've got all of these cells which are packed with bacteria which are fixing nitrogen. So inside these cells, we've got uh, ammonia converted, uh, uh, created from nitrogen, uh, uh, molecular nitrogen. And over here, you can see the uh, vasculature of the plant. So we, we've got, you can imagine that the stem of the root is going to go up like this. And this, the steel, the vascular tissue in the root, is going to transport all of those amino acids up to nourish the rest of the plant.